Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Snyder. I lead our Megapack organization. I've been with Tesla for almost nine years. I'm excited to talk to you today about the Megapack product and the business and some of the exciting things we have ahead of us. From the beginning with this business, we have always focused on building successful projects for our customers and not just the batteries in the box. We've built a hardware and a software platform that is able to adapt to environments all over the world and that is able to scale for, from small island projects to large gigawatt hour scale batteries. We've invested our time and our talent to best understand every aspect, every step in the process, and, and every risk of a project to ultimately provide a solution that is, that is thoughtful, intuitive, provides great value to our customers, and is as plug and play as possible. And yeah, just looking at these projects, it's incredible to see them all come together in one, in, in one montage. We're seeing the future. Yeah, yeah. We've, Impressed. It's t 10 years of building <laughs> these projects, and, and it's, it's incredible to see the impact and to, to see what we have in front of us. Absolutely. We're on our sixth generation of our industrial product, which is the Megapack XL that we're building out of, the, out of Lathrop, California. We've deployed over 16 gigawatt hours of industrial and residential products across 50 countries. And really, Megapack is a market leader. It's best in class in efficiency, reliability, energy density, and easiest to install, lowest cost to install. And we call it XL because it is actually the like, largest, heaviest object that you can transfer around the roads of the world without you know, having to shut them down and get crazy permits and things <laughs> like this. So it is extra large. And <laughs> there is not going to be an XXL. Let's just say it that way. <laughs> There's been incredible demand for the project or for the product. Uh, 2023 is going to be a great year. We have gigawatt hour scale projects being built. Um, the Lathrop factory continues to, to scale and ramp up, and there's new products on the near term roadmap. So a lot to look forward to. How did we get here? Number one, a maniacal focus on all aspects of delivering stationary storage. What do we mean by that? What are some examples? As you see here, the Megapack enclosure, for one example, we designed the wireways directly into the base of the enclosure. So typically, you need to install a bunch of conduits and cables under the ground. Now you can lift them up and install them directly into the base, lower, uh, increasing the speed of deployment and lowering the cost. Next, we see the batteries and the power electronics. And the power electronics is really the, the beauty and the elegance of the Megapack. So this is wh what converts the DC power to AC power on the grid. The brain is built directly into the product. It is able to connect to any grid in the world right out of the box. It allows it to, all the megapacks on a given site to work as one unit. And really, it's, it's, it's what makes it what it is. I think it's the most incredible feature of, of, of the megapack. As you build out the full site, what we end up with is the most energy dense solution on the market, upwards of 300 megawatt hours per acre. And just as a frame of reference, this solution is two times more power dense than a typical gas peaker plant. So th this is the future. This, this, this is where we're going. This is the product that retires the fossil fuels. Yep. One power plant at a time. We talk about power electronics a little bit more. Um, Tesla is a leader in power electronics. We've deployed over 1.4 terawatts across energy storage and vehicle. And we deliver more power electronics than the solar and the wind industry combined on a per annum basis. And power electronics, it's, it's hard to, under, to overstate how impactful they are. They are really the glue in the sustainable energy economy between generation, storage, and the end use. You know, the, 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 those power electronics devices are switching you know, thousands of times per second, hundreds of thousands of times per second to efficiently react to whatever is needed uh, either in the car or in the grid. Um, and because they are so like sort of software driven at their core, they can provide functionality that uh, hasn't been available to the grid in the past. And it's one of the reasons why renewables and storage together are, are such a great solution. Yeah. And one reason that we focus on power electronics and, and control so much is because of the impact that it has on the projects directly. So just as an example here on the left, we have a, we had a, have a firmware feature that we, we call virtual machine mode. And what virtual machine mode, it, mode is, is it contributes to grid stability like a car shock absorber that dampens oscillations or vibrations and keeps the ride smooth. So you can imagine if, if, you, can't, if you don't dampen those, those vibrations, the vehicle could lose control or, or 
or um, someone could get hurt, on the grid, you could have a blackout. We have one grid operator that's utilizing virtual machine mode and said they will not operate their grid at 100% renewables unless they have this feature, unless they have virtual machine mode working. Yeah, and but they tried and it didn't work very well. And virtual, why is it virtual machine mode? It's like synthetic inertia, where you turn the battery power plant into, like, through software, behaving like it's a giant spinning machine, literally, and and be, and it, and and that like inertia stabilizes the grid, right. um, and you don't. But you don't need a giant spinning machine. You don't need like a huge fossil fuel power plant or a giant hydro turbine. You can just have the battery do it. Um, and you can program it to whatever you need at that part of the grid. Or even have it be dynamically changing as the, as the grid conditions change. Right. And that's why we focus so much on it. We believe it's the future of how batteries are going to add value. It's going to be more about adding power stability just as it is about energy. Yep. yep. AutoBidder is a, another software feature I wanted to mention. AutoBidder is an autonomous energy trading platform that in its most basic sense is buying energy low and selling it high, and the, the owner can net the difference of that. But operating battery storage is actually very complex, um, upwards, needing upwards of hundreds or even thousands of decisions every five minutes. It's much more complex than uh, a, a PV, a solar plant, or a wind plant, or a thermal, st uh, thermal battery, uh, or a thermal um, generation plant. And, and it's mostly because of the versatility and the ability of the battery to provide so much value in different ways that these decisions need to be made in real time in order to optimize and, and get the most value out of the battery as it can. So there wasn't a solution that existed in the market, so we built one ourselves. In the market that we've been markets we've deployed them in, in Australia, in Texas, in the UK, it has proven to be a market leader. We're continuing to invest in AutoBidder as we expand to new markets. Second point of how we got here. A relentless focus on speed of execution, and, and there's two points to be made here. First one is in building factories. What you're seeing here is a time lapse of the mega factory that was built in Lathrop. We took it from a JCPenney distribution center to a world-class manufacturing facility in less than 12 months, which is, which is incredible. And really, the, the way that we did this is similar to what my colleagues have described. It's, it's leveraging the vertical integration of Tesla. It's, it's getting the vehicle manufacturing team in the same room as construction and engineering and making decisions quickly with all the decision with all the stakeholders and decision makers. We're using the lessons learned from Lathrop as we speak as we plan for our next factories. Second, it's about installing projects faster. I've mentioned this already, but plug and play is kind of at the core of what we're going for. Over the past four years, we've we've increased the installation speed by 4x and we've reduced the total labor involved across both construction and manufacturing by 3x. We think that this is key to unlocking our ability to scale and our customers' ability to scale with us. We need to be laser focused on reducing that time from when the mega pack leaves the factory to when it is operational on the grid. And it's not just about uh, centralized storage, it's also about distributed storage the future uh, roadmap of, of uh, well, at least here at Tesla. Um, and, and maybe some of you know about this sort of retail plan we have here in, in Texas, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about how that all fits together. So Tesla Electric really unlocks the va full value of distributed energy and storage products. So um, it enables our customers to become their own utility. The data on the page is from our South Australia uh, virtual power plant. Um, another Tesla Electric uh, uh, setup that we have. Um, over, the, over 2022, it's 5,000 customers that we, we have the data for. You can get a sense for what's happening. So just if they were being provided default utility service and you looked at the cost of serving them that electricity, on average, $140 a month. If they all had solar and power wall, but the solar and power wall wasn't interacting with the grid, wasn't participating in the energy market, the cost of serving that customer would go from, uh, would, would have, go from $140 a month to $70 a month. If, you, if Tesla Electric is operating um, those assets in an intelligent way to benefit the grid, uh, Tesla Electric being basically a software that we developed out of AutoBidder for the purposes of, of, of these distributed energy resources, we can actually pay the customers to bring their, their, their energy services to the grid. That's what happened in Australia last year. And Australia is a little bit of a special case. They're, they represent the future, South Australia in particular. Solar and wind supplied 70% of South Australia's energy in 2022. That compares to 30% in Texas and 35% in California. But, it, but this, is a, this is an indication of where this is all headed, of both centralized and distributed um, storage resources uh, providing 
the, the, the key to unlocking fully renewable grids. And Tesla Electric is the retail plan that we're using to bring that to bear for our, our, our customers that have our products. Um, and you know, this is how we're rolling it out. Uh, first, as it exists, uh, it's available for, uh, in Texas for people who have power walls in their homes. But we need to extend beyond that. Over a billion people live in markets with competitive retail electricity. And there's over a two trillion in annual energy spend in these markets. This is a huge opportunity. And the, our intention is to bring this to you know, market by market in the same way that we've, we've approached Tesla Insurance, where we can bring value to our customers to reduce their total cost of ownership of our products. So actually what we're going to do next, and this is pretty exciting here in Texas uh, by, by this summer, we're going to offer a, a retail electricity plan to people who have our cars where they can have unlimited overnight home charging for $30 a month. This is part of reducing the total cost of ownership of our vehicles. And the reason why we can do this is because Texas has a ton of wind. And in Texas, the wind blows at night. So actually serving these customers with electricity at night for their cars is the best thing to do for everyone. And so this is a way to incentivize people to charge at home at night directly from renewable power. It's part of the grand master plan we talked about at the beginning. Um, so we're, we're, we're very excited about this. Um, and we do see this similar to Tesla insurance, as I said, as further reducing the total cost of ownership of electric vehicles. So putting this all together, we're really at the beginning of this uh, massive ramp in energy storage deployment. And yeah. Yeah, reflecting back on the on the master plan, we talk about tens of terawatt hour needing tens of terawatt hours of stationary storage. So we have our sites set on annual production rates of one terawatt hour, which is 25x our capacity at Lathrop. Um, in, the, in, in, in the near term, we see, we see really strong demand for the Megapack product, over 100 gigawatt hours per year uh, in 2023 and growing by over 100 gigawatt hours per year over the next few years. So the demand will, is there. Um, and naturally, as we continue to focus on cost and speed and value, the things that we've mentioned, it's clear we need to build more capacity and we need to ramp it quickly. So while the challenge is big, it's also a huge opportunity for Tesla. It's a huge opportunity for, for the Megapack business. Um, and I'm excited to see the impact that it's going to make on our grid transition. As am I. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes.